Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and today Apple has released iOS 13.1.2 to the general public, marking the fourth iOS 13 firmware release in just over two weeks. This is unprecedented, it hasn't happened before. We'll talk about that in a second, as well as get into iOS 13.1.2's features, but I did want to mention that this video is going to be heavily focused on jailbreaking. In addition to all the iOS 13.1.2 details that we're going to discuss in today's video, we're also going to talk about new developments on the scene since we last spoke with which was just yesterday. Now, this basically builds on all of the recent Checkmate-related news. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you've been living under a rock lately, or maybe you've missed our past several videos concerning this topic, definitely check down below in the description. I'm going to have a dedicated section there specific to the Checkmate exploit, but I also kind of wanted to give you guys a TLDR before we get into this, before we talk about the new information on the jailbreak scene and iOS 13.1.2. So essentially the iPhone 10 A11 powered devices and lower are now jailbroken for life. A jailbreak has yet to come of this. It's basically called the Checkmate exploit. It is a boot ROM exploit that cannot be patched by Apple. It works on a hardware level. And if you do own an A12 or A13 device, don't be disparaged guys, don't lose hope. We're still going to get jailbreaks for those devices. Of that, I'm 100% sure. I just wanted to mention this tweet from security researcher at Alibaba, Min Spark Zing, that is actually Actually quoting what we talked about yesterday that verbose boot demonstration from Axiom X, he said, quote, amazing, no need to use a private jailbreak to get a zero day research environment now. We can have a jailbreak environment on the latest iOS version with Checkmate. It will help researchers to test and find kernel bugs for untethered jailbreak. This is what I've been saying all along, guys. More security researchers will come onto the scene now because we do have devices that are pwned forever that can jailbreak on every every single version, which makes security research that much easier, quote unquote. Of course, it's still not easy by any means, but it's definitely much easier if you have a device that's already jailbroken without a zero day jailbreak environment to discover new zero day kernel vulnerabilities. Now, what zero day means is just that it hasn't been released. So there are people and individuals and groups that have private jailbreaks. That's no secret. They have zero day vulnerabilities that they just don't want to disclose. And of course, anytime Ian Beer discovers kernel vulnerabilities and pushes them out to Apple and Apple releases a new update, those zero day jailbreaks are patched. They never saw the light of day and those security researchers can no longer use that method on the latest firmware. Now they don't have to worry about that. They can do the research for new vulnerabilities on the latest firmware because they have a device that is supported. And of course, that doesn't just apply to devices supported by Checkmate. In theory, a kernel vulnerability should work across all CPUs if it is for the latest version of iOS. So that's something very important that I wanted to make sure that you guys with newer devices understand. But if you do own a device like an iPhone 10 or lower, I don't recommend updating just yet. Now, the reason for that is because nothing has been released. So if you're on a jailbreakable firmware like iOS, 12.4, for instance, you don't want to lose your jailbreak and update to something that it still might take a while to actually receive a jailbreak for. Just because it's jailbroken for life doesn't mean we have a jailbreak right now. To be notified when we do have a jailbreak, definitely subscribe if you have yet to. That way you won't miss out anything that actually comes of this. I will let you guys know every single step of the way. Also, be sure to bookmark our jailbreak status checker page. I'm going to have that linked down below in the description, the very first link. Basically, it just has either a red no or it'll change to a green yes when a jailbreak is out. That page updates automatically, so bookmark that and check back regularly. Okay, so with that said, now let's talk about iOS 13.1.2, then we'll get into the other new jailbreak developments. So hopping inside of settings, followed by general software update, you can see that hopefully, yep, there we go. We have iOS 13.1.2, and it says that it includes bug fixes and improvements for your iPhone. So let's go ahead and tap learn more. Now, 13.1.2 includes the following, quote, fixes a bug where the progress bar for iCloud backup could continue to show after a successful backup, fixes an issue where camera may not work, addresses an issue where the flashlight may not activate, fixes a bug that could result in the loss of display calibration data, fixes an issue where shortcuts 
could not be run on HomePod or from HomePod. And then finally addresses an issue where Bluetooth may disconnect on certain devices. So this is very much an update to address stability and current bugs in iOS 13.1.1 and lower. That's great. I'm so happy that Apple is now focused on stabilizing iOS 13 because it has been kind of a rocky start. To put things in perspective, let's go ahead and check out iOS 12's release cycle. So looking back last year, iOS 12 was first released to the public on September 17th, 2018. We didn't get our first update in the form of iOS 12.0.1 until October 8th, 2018. Now that was almost a month after the initial release of iOS 12. Now we've had four iOS 13 releases in just over two weeks. In fact, 12.1 wasn't released until the end of October, so October 30th. 12.1.1 didn't drop until December 5th of 2018, and 12.1.2, the corresponding firmware for today's iOS 13.1.2 release, wasn't pushed out until December 17th, 2018. So guys, that was three months of releases that we've now received for iOS 13 in just over two weeks. Again, this is unprecedented and absolutely crazy. Apple is really putting a lot of effort into, again, fixing things that maybe shouldn't have been broken from the start, which seems just absolutely crazy if you think about it. And at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, should you update to iOS 13.1.2? Now see, we no longer give update recommendations. Really, it all just depends on you and whether or not you want these latest stability improvements and bug fixes, because 13.1.2 definitely seems more solid over iOS 13.1.1 even, which in itself was a massive improvement over iOS 13.1. If you're already jailbroken, I do not recommend updating no matter what. Whether you're on iOS 12.4 or jailbroken on a lower firmware, I don't suggest going to iOS 13.1.2 right now. Even if you do own something like an iPhone 10 that is supported by the Checkmate exploit, just wait until something is released before updating, guys. Especially with this Checkmate exploit, the beauty of it is that when it's released, it's going to support whatever the latest public firmware is at that time. It doesn't matter if it's iOS 13.1.2, 13.1.3, heck, even iOS 13.3. It will work for ever, as long as the device is supported by Apple. So you don't have to worry about it if you have an older device. But what if you have a newer device? Again, the exact same thing goes. I do not recommend updating until we know more information. If you own something like an iPhone XS, XR, XS Max, or one of the new iPhone 11 devices, then a new kernel exploit is going to have to be released before for a jailbreak is available for those devices. That's just the way it goes, unfortunately. So right now we don't have any information as to the development of a public kernel exploit. There might be one that's private in the works, but we just don't know. I will keep you guys fully updated as the situation develops. And of course, like I've been saying, the Checkmate exploit will hopefully bring more researchers onto the scene, providing more kernel exploits and rolling them into more public jailbreak utilities for the latest devices as well well as the older ones supported by Checkmate. So that's basically my long-winded answer of whether you should update. I don't recommend it, but it's up to you. You definitely assume the risks if you do update, knowing that you will be locked out of jailbreaking if you are on a currently jailbreakable firmware. But if you're on a currently unjailbreakable firmware like iOS 12.4.1, 12.4.2 for supported devices, or even an earlier iteration of iOS 13. Again, I still don't recommend updating. That's really up to you, but we just don't know. A surprise release could come. Something like a jailbreak for iOS 12.4.1 isn't out of the question since we did see some information a while back from ZecOps, which I have covered, but uh, we just don't know. Again, no public plans for any jailbreak on a currently unjailbreakable firmware right now, other than what's going to come from the Checkmate exploit and uh, everything surrounding that, potentially new kernel vulnerabilities. But like I've been saying, that is just going to be a developing situation. So you're gonna have to subscribe and I will keep you guys fully updated as that situation unfolds. So. Now, let's talk about the rest of what I wanted to get into in today's video. First and foremost, I wanted to mention that Cilio has actually been updated to include support for iOS 13. Now you might be wondering, well, is there an iOS 13 jailbreak? 
No, no, there definitely isn't, as I've been saying throughout this video. Again, though, this basically just means that you can use Cilio in theory on iOS 13 to do things like, well, use it as a repo browser. So that's basically it, to browse sources, aka repos or repositories, and uh, see which packages are available and keep up to date with those if you want to sideload it. But Again, it's not really too useful other than the fact that it is future-proofing and preparing for when there is an iOS 13 jailbreak, which to me is the cooler part of this rather than just using it sandboxed as a repo browser. Next, I wanted to talk about something that kind of builds on what we mentioned yesterday. We talked about verbose boot. Axiom X was actually able to get that working on a device on iOS 13.1.1, specifically the iPhone 10. So for all intents and purposes, jailbreaking, just not what we're used to when we think of jailbreaking, because of course it doesn't have City or any of the patches required to actually run tweaks, but he did enable verbose boot, which was something incredibly awesome. This builds on that. This Twitter user posted proof that they have successfully exploited their compatible device with Checkmate and loaded a custom boot logo on. Throwback time, guys. This user has the pineapple apple logo on their device thanks to Axiom X's Checkmate exploit. So great things are going to come of this, as I've been saying, and uh, that's just the latest. And I want to let you guys know that. And again, recap that NOAA jailbreak has not been released. A jailbreak is going to be released shortly. We just don't know exactly when, and it will function on iPhone 10 and lower first. And then newer devices will hopefully be included in a later update once new kernel exploits are discovered. And because I iOS 13 is filled with bugs that does leave more room for potential exploitation. So this is exciting. I recommend staying on as low of a firmware as possible though. And don't forget to ding that bell so you don't miss out anytime we release these type of videos, letting you guys know what's going to happen because from day to day, we just don't know. We didn't know iOS 13.1.2 was going to be released yesterday, and we also didn't know that custom boot logos would be loaded onto Checkmate compatible devices this quickly. So great things are gonna come. I hope you guys are as excited as I am, and until next time, this is ICU, signing out.